Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video we're going to be covering something that I thought is pretty cool and it's going to be animated backgrounds. This is one of the most requested questions I get all the time and the definition of an animated background could mean many, many different things. So um, I'm going to do my take and this may become a series. I may do multiple type videos like this, but um, this is kind of like my first initial take it kind of what I would think of as an animated background, something that can be used um, kind of you, you know, you duplicate it, maybe you tile it, maybe it's only 10 seconds long and it, it basically, you could just cycle it through, continuously cycle it through. Now the ones that I'm, I'm gonna show you are not necessarily like high tech, but it's a really cool technique that you could use to create other ones that um, are even cooler. And I'm sure once you guys get your hands on this project file over on our Patreon account, you'll be able to create some really cool stuff. So um, let's just go ahead and jump in After Effects here. And um, you can see, I do have this one project already set up. Um, but I will recreate it here. So I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to do demo and I'm just going to drag all of these compositions into the demo and then I'm going to make a tutorial one um, just so I could split these up and I'm just going to close these out. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition, composition new. Um, I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080 and 30 seconds is probably good enough. This is a very, um, I mean, I don't wanna say it's very CPU intensive, but for typical computers that most of us are probably working on, it's kind of intensive. Um, if you're working on a, on a huge workstation, it's not. But um, 10 seconds is fine, I think that's good enough. Um, and I'm gonna leave it at, at 29.97 frames per second, just because it is intensive. So um, I guess the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, create a layer new solid and I am, it doesn't really matter which color it is, but I'm gonna name this, um, I'm just gonna name this gray. Not, I'm, I'm not trying to be creative today. And I'm gonna attach a few different things to this. The first one is a fractal noise. So I'm just gonna search in my effects and presets for noise and add a fractal noise to it. And the next thing I'm gonna search for is mosaic. Now there's two mosaics, one that's an animated preset, and one that's a stylized. You want the one that's on stylized, and I'm gonna drop it on. Now the number of blocks is a little bit arbitrary at this point, but we will change that later. But what you wanna do is you wanna adjust the fractal noise until it kind of gives you a, a look that you're looking for. Now what we're gonna be using this for is applying a time displacement and the time displacement is going to be directly linked to this grid so the darker it is the slower the displacement of time is the white the whiter the grid is um, the faster the displacement of time so basically you're just creating a differential in the speed of an animation and so you'll, I think you'll understand a little bit more here in a second, but I like when there's a lot of variety because then it, it lengthens the time between the um, the animation. It makes it look a little bit more dynamic. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the complexity and I'm gonna increase the contrast and I will add a slight evolution. So I'm just gonna set a keyframe for evolution, go to the end and I'm gonna maybe make this 30. So it's not too much. Maybe I'll just make this 360. Just do one full loop and see what that looks like. That may be quite a bit, but we could always modify it later. So the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a layer new composition and make this 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Um, the same frame rate and the same duration is fine. And on this, I'm just gonna create an arbitrary shape. So this is kind of what your independent um, shape objects will be. So for the first example, I'm just gonna make a sphere um, or a circle holding shift to make it a perfect circle. Um, and it is in the center, but I'm just gonna align it using the align tool. And you can get this by just going to windows um, align. You notice that when I created this shape, it automatically put the anchor point in the center. That's actually a setting in After Effects. I don't know if it's new, but if you go to edit preferences, general, um, and there it goes, I don't know why it took forever to pop up. Uh, it says somewhere, center anchor point in new shape layers. If you check this box, then every time you make a new shape layer, it will automatically center the anchor points. Totally saves me so much time. Um, I don't know if that's new or not, but if it is not, then I was an idiot this whole time. So I'm just gonna reduce the stroke to zero and I'm going to add some animations to this circle. So I am going to hit S on the keyboard and I'm gonna maybe start this at 30. And then maybe at two seconds, I'm going to increase this to maybe 60. 
and then maybe down to 20. And then I'm going to copy the first keyframe and paste it. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want this animation to kind of have a loop to it. And then I'm just gonna copy all of these and paste them again. So it is a little bit long, this animation. Um, maybe I will sh kind of shrink this up a little bit. I do want some downtime, but I don't want a ton of downtime. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but that's probably fine. Honestly, I could probably just get away with kind of a scale up, scale down type deal. And I could animate these um, using this motion tool from mountmograph.com. Link will be down in the description if you wanna get it, or you can adjust the graph editor however you choose. So let's take a look at this. So pretty easy so far, right? Okay, so let's come back over here. I'm gonna just make that background um, gray layer invisible. And I'm gonna drag this, uh, I'm gonna drag this comp five into my composition. And you can see it's there pretty small. And I'm going to center it up. So I could already tell just by the size that this is probably gonna need to increase. Um, so let me just go ahead and do that before we get too far into it. Maybe I'm gonna make this start at 50 and go up to maybe 80 and then down to 40, 40, maybe 90 and then I'm going to do 50 again. That way it's a perfect loop. So I think that will be a little bit larger, which it is. Now I'm just gonna search for the tool called, um, what the heck is this tool called? Tile, something tile. I know it's tile something, uh, motion tile, here it is. I'm just gonna drag that onto my dot and I'm gonna rename this dot to um, texture. And so what this basically does is, you'll see here in a minute, when I drag this out, it will basically mirror this horizontally as many as I want. So I think that's probably good. And then I could also do it um, vertically as many as I want. And this is, I don't really like using this, but basically I could also adjust the width. Um, and you can see that, that, it, that it kind of scrunches them up, but I want this and this to be equal. And I could have done that by making the composition instead of 50 by 50, I could have divided this by the number of squares I wanted and made my composition that size. But uh, I'm gonna be a little bit lazy here. And I'm just gonna pull one more in. So they are a little scrunched, but you honestly can't really tell. So there you have it. Um, and you can see that the animation is happening just as it was expected to. Now here's where the crazy stuff comes in, or not so crazy stuff depending on how good you are with After Effects. If I go to Layer New, Adjustment Layer, and I add something called Time, Displacement, and drag this onto my layer, I could choose now my gray grid, and I could change this to Effects and Masks. And basically what this is gonna do is take all of the Effects and Masks, masks into account for a time displacement mapping of this of this um, composition. So you can see here that some of the circles are bigger than others, some are smaller, but they're kind of being cut off. And the reason why they're being cut off is if I make this gray layer visible again, you can see that, that it gets cut off. So what I do is I like to count the number of objects. It's going to kind of take a while, but um, I'm just going to count horizontally and vertically and be right back. Okay, so now we're starting to get there. We can still see they still don't line up. So I'm just gonna actually scale this layer down by hitting S on the keyboard and scaling it down. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't take that scaling into effect. So I'm gonna actually have to come in here and create a layer new solid. Doesn't matter which color it is, put it underneath, and then I'm gonna have to pre-comp all of this together by hitting Control Shift C. And now calling this um, grid. And so now, on this adjustment layer, I need to change this to the grid and make that invisible. 
And you can see here that when I hit play, the grid will come into effect. Uh, maybe it won't. 2,000 years later. Okay, so I'm back. So there was something weird that happened um, with my adjustment layer. So I just actually deleted my adjustment layer, um, added a new adjustment layer, applied the time displacement to it, set the displacement layer to grid, set the time displacement to masks and effects. Um, I actually don't need to do that anymore. So I did that initially, I don't need to do that. Um, and you can see here that these are starting to look like they're different sizes when you zoom out. Um, so I'm gonna hit play and let this thing render out and let's see what it looks like. Okay, we're back. So one thing that you notice right off the bat is that the start of it is not the same as the end and that's a problem. So I'm gonna go into the uh, comp five and just move this over and probably move this over as well. Because you are getting a slight delay in the beginning, which will affect what it looks like in the beginning. So let me see, that looks about right. That looks about right. So I'm just checking the first and last frames and let's run to this thing again. Okay, so you can see though that that looks pretty cool. Um, the last thing I'd say we can do is we can adjust the max displacement time as well as the resolution. The resolution I think is fine. Basically, that's how granular um, you want the, uh, the time displacement to be on the gradations. But max displacement time, you might wanna change to like 1.5 or possibly even two. You have to be careful because you might go over the length of time that these dots actually exist. So at the end frame, there may be a situation where dots are starting to disappear. Um, but what I want to do is I basically want the two pieces of the animation to kind of blend together. So I'm gonna reduce this down to quarter size just so I can get a kind of an idea of what this is gonna look like uh, with a max displacement time of two seconds. So I can see right off the bat at two seconds, it's starting a little early. Um, so 1.5, it's still starting early. One is kind of the sweet spot. So I'm gonna come in here and so I'm actually gonna drag these over to just past two seconds and holding alt, I'm just gonna make sure that they don't go, they're ha basically happening within the middle um, six seconds. Okay, so I think that looks pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna show you one last thing on this. Um, if I jump into this shape layer, I could do a number of different things. This dot is just one example. So I'm gonna make this dot invisible and I'm gonna create a line by holding shift, simply dragging down and creating the thickness maybe one pixel wide, very thin. Um, center up the anchor point and center it up in the composition, which it basically looks like it is already. Hmm. For some reason that doesn't quite look centered and that is not centered at all. Bizarre. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer, hit R on the keyboard and rotate it by 90 degrees. Now I duplicated that layer by hitting Control D. I think one pixel is a little thin so I'm gonna increase this to two pixels and hit S on the keyboard and uncheck this chain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to one second and I am going to change the the Y kind of thickness on this to maybe 25. And that should be centered up there. And that should be centered up there. I don't know why this uh, align tool isn't working, um, but I'm also gonna change this to 25. And so um, I can make this even more creative. I could open this up and I could adjust the contents here and change the shape stroke width to one and set a keyframe, press you on the keyboard and then do the same thing on this stroke. Set it to one and press you on the keyboard. So I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard set keyframes you on the keyboard, and let's try to do something kind of creative. So I'm gonna stretch this all the way off screen, 
in both ways, and I'm going to increase this to two. I'm going to increase this to two. So it kind of looks like that. And then I'm going to copy these keyframes. You actually can't copy two layers at once, so I'm just going to do one at a time and paste, and then add some smoothing using this motion tool. So just so you can see what this kind of looks like. So that looks kind of cool. And when we jump over here, it will obviously change the shape, just is loading. So actually right off the bat, I could tell you, I actually don't like increasing the stroke. So I'm gonna come back here and just completely disable the stroke changes. So that certainly gives you a different look. Something different you could do is instead of making those expand, you can maybe pair it one to the other and have it rotate. So obviously the more shapes you have, um, the longer this will take. If you want, let's say a 10 by five grid, it will look a little bit different. But this can kind of give you a really cool look as well. So actually from when you're zoomed out, you almost can't even tell that it's animated, which is kind of the beauty of it, to be honest. That's kind of what I like about animated backgrounds because you can't really, you're kind of looking at it and you're like, wait, oh wait, that's moving, that's pretty cool. And you can see that these are kind of moving at different rates, which is, I actually really like this one a lot. It almost looks like dots. So I'm gonna leave it on this one. If you wanna download this project file, I'm gonna just leave all of this here so you can mess with the ones that I have preset. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, check out the project file on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching.